Hello everyone and welcome back to Wolf. And we are here with Star and her pups. Everything seems fine so far. We have Evergreen, ooh, he's getting hungry. And we have Oak, and we have Birch, and there had better be something to eat pretty close here. Okay, so supposedly there's a carcass right up here. I think we're gonna head that way and uh, try and get some food pretty quickly because those guys are gonna need it. We're a little hungry as well, but we're not that hungry. So eating here should be fine. And the carcass is right up here. Uh, Star has been very good in the time skip over getting food for her pups. That was actually, uh, she did amazingly this time, but I think she may have consumed a lot of the resources that are, are nearby. So that's kind of a, um, that, that's a little bit disconcerting and not, not such a great thing. All right, let's go ahead. Oh, this one's fresh though. So, so maybe she hasn't. Uh, let's go ahead. We will uh, take from this carcass. And I'm actually going to bring some prey back and bury it. We don't actually have to carry food back for the pups. Like, we don't have to carry it in our mouth. But, um, because wolves will regurgitate it. But it's nice to be able to do that. Because then we can cache it right at the den. And uh, we can use it to replenish our own food bar. Because our food bar will go down when the, um... Uh, when the pups have eaten. So let's come over here and we should be able to make our way back pretty soon here. I don't think we should have issues with getting back in time. Uh, I think they'll be all right because they were uh, pretty, uh, they were doing pretty pretty well already when we were there. They just needed some food. <laughs> so I think we, they won't need that much food. I think we'll be all right, but we got to move it. And I have been noticing, I don't think the pups are actually targeted by hunters or by airplanes because while I was time skipping, a couple of times the plane flew right over the den and the pups were completely unaffected. So I think that at least is a blessing. Let's go ahead and I'm going to bury this real fast. And then these guys, how are they doing? Uh, they're, they're still all right on food. So let's go ahead and we should be able to feed them in here. Oh, except it's morning. <laughs> so we gotta wait for it to change to morning, and then I don't know if it actually registered my click or not because it was going into the cutscene. But uh, we shall see. And I think the music may be a little different. So these guys should be a month old now as well. It's interesting music. <laughs> um, these guys should be... Yeah, they are now one month old. So let's see, uh, let's go ahead and feed them. But yeah, we time skipped a month in between and we're gonna continue to do that until we uh, have gotten these guys to adulthood because otherwise it's gonna take us forever to actually raise them. So what I do is I put it on autoplay in the meantime and uh, then it's not too bad. And they're gonna play with each other and then we should feed them this is kind of a long cutscene. That's one part that's slightly slightly frustrating about this game is how long some of the cutscenes are. Uh, but it's usually not too bad. So here we go. And she's gonna give them some food and they should go eat it after she leaves. And I think, yep, here they come. Here's one at least. And it feeds all of them. There's two, okay. It feeds all of them, so uh, that's at least a very good thing. And we only have three here, I believe. We have three on this profile, and we have four with Aries, I believe. This music is weird. I'm not used to it because I think it changes from season to season. And uh, so here we go. We have Evergreen, who's male. We have... who's over here? We have Birch, who's female. And we have, who's right here? Oak, who's male as well. And then our um, our food is down again, so I'm going to dig up. Oops, that was, no, um, there we go. Hit the wrong button, That's that makes sense. So then we should be able to fill our food up quite a bit. And that actually got us all the way up to full. And are we able to drink from the ground? We can, because it is a, it is puddling, I guess. Uh, it's actually been raining here, which has uh, been kind of nice because we don't get a lot of rain in real life, I mean. Uh, but yeah, so it's nice to get rain here even in the game, too. And I think we have quite a few carcasses, but maybe I'll go see what this moose is all about. Because if that moose is uh, pretty weak, then it might be worth trying to take him down or at least weaken him so that there will be food for in the meantime. And let's see, I don't actually know... 
Crow is out there somewhere, but I don't know where he's gotten off to. <laughs> so, so we'll see. Um, hmm. Let's come up here. And I think, okay, the moose has gone down this way. We are upwind, so that's good. And is he running yet? I don't think he's actually running. Oh, he is running, isn't he? Oh, we gotta go this way and try and cut him off then. I'm gonna try and come down, actually, and then push him back towards the den, because if we can kill him close to the den... Is that wolf that's 14 away, Crow? Crow is quite the wanderer, so I think he'll probably be fine, but it's always a little bit nerve-wracking when he, he goes and disappears like that, because uh, you never know exactly what he is doing. Um, let's see. We'll make our way down here... And... Oh, there's the moose. Okay, is he... How's he doing? Oh, he ran. He ran. He's running. Alright, that's not good. We're gonna try and make our way down here. He's running pretty fast, I think. So we're gonna keep trying to cut him off and see if we can push him back towards the den again. He probably won't run for long. I don't think moose run very far. They just kind of sprint a little ways off. Because uh, they are pretty big, they're hard to take down. Oh, he's right there, he's right there, okay. Let's get around him and see if we can circle past and cut him off. Okay, he's right here. And we should be able to spook him up this way. Oh, he's gonna run this way. Alright, how is he actually doing? Is he strong? He's very strong. Okay, so we want to be kind of cautious with him because he could do some damage. But we'll keep chasing him and just see. Your wolf does get stronger over time, I'm pretty sure, the more with the more kills you make. So if we look at Star on the pack stats here, then uh, she's killed 60 rabbits, 25 caribou, and 2 moose. And no musk ox. So she's probably going to be pretty strong at this point. She has killed moose in the past, so she's probably going to be fairly, uh, fairly good strength-wise. Let's see if we can catch up to him, though. The den is now up from us, so we want to try and circle down underneath. That's going to be a little annoying, because we it will put us um, it'll, we'll put us upwind of him. And so he might be more likely to spook and run, but we're going to chase him anyway. Alright, we're going to catch up to him. And when I see we've caught up alongside him, then I'm going to push him up. There we go, okay. So, oh, no, I'm pushing him the wrong way. Oh, he's running this way. No, that's not what I wanted. He's going to go too far. He's gone too far. Okay. We're going to slow down and trot a little bit to regain some stamina. And we'll try and catch up alongside him again. And uh, hopefully be able to push him back toward the den. I don't know if we'll actually get to take him down this time. But if we do, that'll help out a lot. There's also caribou. Let me see if any of these caribou might be worth hunting. Because if they are, then maybe it'd be better to pursue one of those. Because she has killed 25 caribou, which means that a lot of them are likely to be within her hunting capacity. Okay, how strong is this one? Not that strong. So if we're going to kill anything, it probably could be a caribou. Alright, let's continue to chase. Are we actually headed back towards the den? Oh, is he actually limping? He may actually be limping. I think he is. Okay, I'm going to try and push him back a little bit closer towards the den. But uh, he's pretty weak, so I think we'll probably be able to take him down. Alright, here we go. He kind of went off this way. So we might try and circle him just a little bit. And I think we should be able to catch up to him. And we're pretty close to the den here. I want to try and get him practically on top of it if I can. Because in Wolf, there's no predators that are drawn to carcasses. The predators are going to be humans. And they don't approach carcasses, whereas like in Wolf Quest, you really don't want to uh, put a bunch of carcasses right by your den because you will attract predators and then they'll come after your pups and it'll just be bad news. So we're kind of going to chase this guy a little bit towards the den more before we actually, um, before we actually hunt him down. He has like no stamina left, so that's pretty good. And... It's turning to night, I believe. Alright. So the den is right up above us. We're going to try and push him upwards. Yep. And we should be able to kill him practically right at the den. No, I want to... No, no, you're not going that way. 
You're not going that way. You're going up towards the den. You're going to go up towards the den. There we go. He's going back towards it. That's good. All right, let's try and keep him kind of on track. And then we'll probably go ahead and rest through the night. Is he going to be close enough? Is he going to be close enough? He's pretty close. I think we should be okay to get him pr pretty much like right here. He's still going to be closer. Hey, where are you going, dude? No, you're not going to do that. We're not doing this. You're going to go up towards the den, which is right up this way. You're going to go down right here. There we go. We should be able to take him down. We're close. Oh, we weren't actually close enough to reach him. Maybe we have to, maybe we can't be too close either. There we go. And we should be able to take him out. Yep, he's going down. And there we go. We're up to 26 caribou killed. And we have a carcass right here, right by the pups. How's everyone doing? Everybody's doing pretty well. And yeah, that should be nice. All right, we're going to go get a drink of water because that's what's draining for us right now. And then we'll go ahead and sleep through the night and uh, get some rest so that morning will come here. Uh, no, I didn't want to bark. I wanted to drink. <laughs> I hit the wrong button. Oops. Uh, let's come down here. And we'll come back and rest through the rest of the night here. And there's... Okay, there's the other two. All right. Here we go. And we should be able to... It's still not very calm music. Um, and let me know what you think of the volume and the music relative to the volume of my voice. Because I'm trying to play with audio settings. And I have had issues with this in the past being way too loud and also way too quiet. So let me know what you think of the current audio volume. And I don't think... I don't hear any danger. I think we'll be alright. I think that was just hunting music continuing to play. The hunting music is a little bit jarring, admittedly. And everybody's heading up this way. Are they all going to get water? I think so. Alright, we could use a little more water too. The nice thing is water is a non-expendable resource, so it, it will never be completely used up. Whereas the food you really want to be careful about not eating too well. Oh hey, Crow! Crow! Where, where have you been? Where have you been? <laughs> he's going to get water. I, I don't know exactly where he went, but uh, he, he's been off wandering again, probably patrolling the territory. I hope he's been patrolling the territory. He, he's having a bit of a hard time settling down and staying in one spot. He likes to be an adventurer and go wandering around, and uh, so he's a little bit... Um, uh, a little bit of a uh, a wanderer in that respect and always getting into trouble although I do worry sometimes about what he does when he's gone because we have had so many planes that I'm a little worried he's running off and killing cows and that will raise the bounty on wolves because then you have uh, a livestock killer at hand and uh, that's not a good thing if we have more more enemies showing up so we want to be a little bit cautious of that um, but I hope that's not what he's doing so we shall see. Uh, hopefully, hopefully nothing nothing bad happens with that. But yeah, that can be a big problem even in real life too. Is what do you do with an animal that starts uh, turning on livestock and killing livestock? What do you do when an animal is then negatively impacting the human environment? That's a big question, and there's a lot of people who say that they should just be eliminated, and there's a lot that say no, wait, don't do that. And it's a big question, and it's a uh, it's a lot more complicated because it's hard. Sometimes we tend to, I think in some ways, we idolize the animals a little bit. And so like with wolves, they they get to be... Um, like everybody, everybody kind of over glorifies them to the extent of when it comes down to it, yeah, they are a predator and sometimes they do attack livestock. Now, I'm always going to be a proponent of not just immediately having to put an animal down because it's eating livestock. If there's any alternative, I believe that's the best case scenario. But in some cases, there's not an alternative and uh, there's really no other choice but to just put the animal down so that it doesn't continue to come into conflict with humans. And a lot of the times if it comes into conflict with humans anyway, even if they're not supposed to, people will often take matters into their own hands and the animal may end up dead just as it is. Um, but in regards to that, there's actually, um, there's a lot of ways that can be, that an animal can be chased off. I know up in, I think it's Oregon, 
uh, at where they have bears. They are um, working on non-lethal means of dealing with problem bears, and one of those is to actually, uh, what they'll do is they'll, they'll catch a bear that's gotten acclimated to humans, that's been wandering the town, causing problems just by being there because bears are, are dangerous. Um, and they, they just, since they're so large, they can be a big issue if they get acclimated to humans and then are around humans. So one of the things they've started doing is they'll actually release them in the woods and then they'll have a lot of people standing around yelling to scare them and they'll actually shoot rubber bullets, which won't do any harm, but it'll, it'll scare them if they get hit by it. And then they'll actually have trained dogs to chase them and it's it's not a fun experience for the bear but that's the whole point is to scare them away from being around humans so that then they're no longer causing problems for the humans and uh, they can be uh, so that they're no longer then um, being an issue and no longer threatening the human population and no longer putting people in danger and it's 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 not necessarily fun for the bear at the time but it's good for them in the long run because then they won't be in a situation where they might become such a problem that they have to be put down. And so they are they are learning how to use more non-lethal methods to control potentially problem animals. And so that's a very, very good thing. Um, but that is something that this game reflects, is that when you kill the cattle in this, it does make the hunters show up more frequently, because now they're looking for an animal that's become acclimated to humans, that's become a problem, and is now becoming dangerous. Uh, the trouble with killing livestock is, for one thing, I mean, that's now impacting someone's livelihood. And for another, an animal that continues to get more and more acclimated to humans, to the scent of humans, to domestic animals, then may become less and less afraid of humans as well, and could potentially attack them should there be an encounter. So it, it's a very complex issue, and it's not... Uh, it's not as one-sided as even I used to see it. I've learned a lot more about it just since I started working on this channel. Uh, I've learned so much more about this issue. And so the other important thing, too, is to not get locked into one mindset, to not, um, to not, to not think there, there's... Sometimes things aren't as black and white as they seem. I used to think hunting in general was a bad thing, but it turns out that a lot of the time... Uh, hunting can actually be necessary and it's very carefully regulated. Um, we actually had a live stream at one point with my, my friend's dad and uh, that was really, really good because he used to be forest ranger and he actually talked about how hunting actually helps control overpopulation and overpopulation is where you might have and an, like if you have too many deer then they start eating everything and then there's no more food and they start starving to death. And hunting will help control that, whereas predators will naturally do that as well. But as humans in humans in, have encroached a little bit into the wild space, and a lot of the time the predators are the ones that will avoid them, whereas the prey will tend to be more adaptable and more coming into the cities. You'll find deer in the cities, you'll find them in the suburbs. And uh, so sometimes then humans have to take on the role of the predator in some sense as well to keep the, the deer from overpopulating and to ensure that the population of deer stays healthier as a whole and you don't end up with a bunch of sickly individuals who can't find enough food to sustain themselves. So hunting isn't all bad, it just needs to be carefully regulated and uh, you need to be kind of cautious. Of course you want to, you wanna, if you're going to go hunting, you want to be as humane as possible. That's why certain types of trapping aren't allowed. There's some traps that are much more humane than others. And um, you want to make sure that you're being very careful and, of course, the regulations need to be in place so that you don't overhunt as well. But all in all, hunting can actually be pretty beneficial to the ecosystem because it helps keep things in balance where maybe the predators have moved out of the area to avoid conflicting with us. I mean, when it comes down to it, we are a part of the ecosystem as well. And we play a pretty different role than a lot of animals will. But we still are a part of the ecosystem and we end up being a competitive predator for a lot of the other predators that are out there. And when that happens, if a predator does get driven away due to competition with us, then sometimes it does come down to us to help fill that role in some ways. And so it's a much more complex issue than, uh, than it looks like on the, at first. Um, as long as it's carefully regulated, hunting can be a very good thing, but at the same time, you do have to be really careful. I probably shouldn't have eaten just then. We were, probably had enough food um, for the time being. And how is everybody doing here? 
I want to make sure you guys are all still all right now. Okay, you guys are getting a little bit low on food, so we'll go feed them as well. Leave them nice on full on food because we're going to end up, um, uh, we're going to end up wrapping up the episode here. But yeah, so it's not as much of a black and white issue as it looks at first. And uh, I used to see it as pretty black and white, but really it's not so simple. <laughs> it's a lot more of a complicated issue than a lot of people see it as, and that's a big reason why I want to continue with this channel, is to continue to explore those issues and to, to learn and grow for myself, but to also help other people learn and grow as well, because this is a very underrepresented issue, and uh, a lot of people end up getting locked into one view on it and it can be hard not you have to consider all sides of the the equation and that's what's so difficult about it is you have to try and find what's best not just for the people not just for the animals but what's going to work best for both uh but anyway i think we're going to go ahead and wrap up this episode here for today so so far so good we're at one month with these guys and they are doing well so hopefully that continues but yeah thank you guys so much for watching i hope you've enjoyed the episode don't forget to like and subscribe and i will see you guys next time but until then this is jay over and out